This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Midnight tonight. This is the time of the week I absolutely enjoy. Uh, you know, I really have. I I have actually gained a greater repartee with you than I now than I ever did in the old days. Right, 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 right. You know, I mean. Well, uh, we're both not on drugs. Well, that that helps. <laughs> yeah, that helps a lot. Of course, mine was an upper called cocaine, and yours was a downer called uh, heroin. Right. That's correct. And and quite frankly, I think it was probably easier for you to get off heroin than it was for me to get off cocaine. Why is that? I don't know. They say that, for instance, getting off cocaine is easier than quitting smoking. Physically, mentally, no. Mentally, no? No. Yeah. I don't think so. Because, you know, here's the thing about the heroin. Heroin only has a three-day detox. Once after okay. three days has passed, it's left your system. So what's left is the desire for it. Well, also you don't sleep for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you try to sleep? Sure. You just don't. You just lie there with your eyes wide open, right? Pretty much. Pretty much for days on end. Well, you know what happens with me though on a lot of things. I think I'm not sleeping, but I really am. Really? Yeah, I mean, there t- have you ever had times where you thought you weren't sleeping, and all of a sudden you looked at the clock, and it was five year, five hours later. Yes. And you yes, I have had that. And you didn't think you had fallen asleep, but you had. Right. You had. Right. But, but right. You, right. You, I guess you didn't dream or something like that. So how long? How long was it before you finally said, "I think I've kicked this thing." You, you know I don't. I don't know if you ever completely kick the thing. You always have that thought in your mind. Like I went and visited a friend of mine in the hospital recently. Yeah. And he was all drugged up, and he was all nodding out, and that made me Jones. Even after 16 years, it still made me Jones. It still made you Jones. You know, yes. I, I never have. A lot of people tell me that after a certain amount of years, okay, they right. still have a desire for a cigarette. Sure. I don't have any desire for a cigarette. Right. I, 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 I and I, you know, I've smoked joints, but that's not the same as smoking. You know. Well, so. it's smoking. It's just not cigarettes. Right. You don't get that nicotine in you. But right, somehow, right. once I quit, I said I quit. You probably were around when I quit. I quit when I was at the, the Quake. Really? Yeah. Then I was around. Yeah. A guy came in one morning. And he said, we're going to do a test on you to see how your lungs are because you're a smoker. Right. And I, I, you know, I was one of those people who had, uh, I was in my 40s, who said, hey, I haven't had any effects from smoking. It's right. terrific, you know. Right. And he tested my lungs and he said, you have a diminished lung capacity. I said, really? And, he said, and that was a wake up for you? Well, that was a first. I always said to myself, "I'll quit smoking when I find that smoking is is impeding my health." Okay, right. And uh, I did, and and uh, and that was the wake up call. That was the thing that. And so the next day, I decided I was going to quit, and I went out right. and I bought. They had things called Bantron in those days. I don't know if they still have it. What it was was a pill you took that replaced nicotine in your body. So I started taking them, and I didn't have the desire to smoke a cigarette. And then right. I slowly weaned myself off the Bantron. Bingo! I quit smoking. You know, really? And, and I, yeah, I'm kind of like my father. You, know, my father was a musician, and he used to drink a lot. I mean, a lot, because okay. you would, you would go and play clubs, and then somebody would say, "Buy the band a drink." Right. Right, and by the end of the night, everybody was sloshed except my father. He could hold his liquor. Right. 
One day, he suddenly realized that he couldn't hold his liquor. That he was okay. he, he was starting to get really drunk when he would drink. Right. So, boom, he just stopped. He just really? Said, That's it. That's it. And he stopped. So I think I had that same genetic code in me that makes right. me able to quit anything I might start. I mean, I, I right. had a pretty decent cocaine habit at one point. Really? And I moved down to Florida, and at the Florida border, I took my last snort, and that was it. Right. You know, about a couple of years later, I had one of those New Year's parties that I would have at my house after we did right. the show at the uh, Palace of Fine Arts. Right. And I bought about uh, a, a gram of Coke for the party. Right. And I figured, you know, I haven't done Coke in such a long time. I think the trouble with Coke was you use Coke, and you have a good time on it, and after a while, uh, it doesn't do anything new for you. No. You know, it, 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 and so I figured, hey, I haven't done it in how many years? Three, two, three years. I'll right. Do, I'll do some tonight, right? I did some that night. And it wasn't like all of a sudden I got that buzz all over again. Right. My body kind of picked up where it left off. Right. That's exactly right. And I didn't get any. I didn't have any pro I, I didn't get any push uh, uh, any zet, what's the word I'm looking for I'm having trouble with words lately with this you didn't get off. euphoric I didn't I didn't get my buzz off of it right know? and so therefore I just quit it completely I just said you know this, this doesn't do anything for me anymore right you know it's just right 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 I just it just reminded me how bad it was right yeah, so. right right so, right you like you said you started right where you left off exactly so I, I let uh, the rest of the people at the party do the, all the coke, and they had fun. You know. There you go. Mm. But those were the days in San Francisco where coke was a big deal. You know, huge, I, huge, I, and, I, it, I, and it was I, everywhere. I got started on it at a radio station. I was at KMEL, and we had a general manager. And after the show, he said, "Good show, close the door." Right. And they put out two couple of lines, and we I'd snort them. Right, uh, and after a while, I got used to that, you know. Sure. And it, what was nice was I never had to pay for it because the boss was always giving it to me. Right. You know. Right. But then, I left there and I started buying the stuff, and I kept doing it. I guess I was doing it at Live One Hundred and Five for most of the time that I was there the first time. Right. You know? Right. Right. And then right. When I moved to Florida. I quit. Now that's strange right. that you would move to Florida and quit cocaine, ladies. Right, no kidding, huh? Yeah, no kidding. So I, uh, uh, I just quit cocaine and. Uh, uh, well, also back. when you were in Florida, you didn't go looking for it, so you had no connections. Well, I could have though. I got to know a lot of comics down there and stuff like that. Right. And and I would go places and they would have coke, and I would maybe do a little bit of it, but I I wasn't. Uh, in fact, one comic was actually a coke dealer. And I didn't buy anything from it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I just said I've quit, so I've quit, you know. But I came back to San Francisco, and uh, the show wasn't as good as it had been. Right. Uh, because the, I would use cocaine. See, I mean, I did a morning show. Right. And with a morning show, you got to get up at, you know, God, ungodly hour. My show went on at 6, and I had to get up at 5. Right. Uh, it's, it's a, it isn't. I was very much a nocturnal person until I did a we morning We all were, Alex. Until I did a morning show. And just because you start becoming a diurnal person, you get up early at five, doesn't mean your body has changed. Because anytime I was suddenly out of work, I was up till four in the morning. Really? Yeah, I'm very nocturnal. Still am. Man, when, when, when I would do your show, most times I wouldn't even sleep the night before. Right. Right. Right? I think a lot of comics said that to me. They right. went out, they party afterwards. Because most of you guys didn't get through with, with a gig until maybe 1 o'clock in the morning. Right. Right, right. And uh, uh, that was the virtue of not being a headliner. <clears throat> because if you're a headliner, you went till 2 o'clock in the morning when the bars closed. Um, right, but you got enough booze at the club. Don't forget, you get your drinks for free at the club. Yep. Or you used to. In those days, you did. You don't anymore? I don't know. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was quite a time for me that way. 
And then I just quit, and I quit all drugs. I mean, I, I don't. Marjorie loves her pot. You know, she loves to have a joint every now and then. Right. And she, if she says, as they say, when you're smoking pot, here. Uh, <laughs> I always said that was it. That was a that was a pot word. Here. Right. And, right. 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 And then you pass it. But the one thing I liked about pot was how sociable it was. Right. Very sociable drug. Whole ritual behind it. You know, you roll the joint. Somebody rolls the joint. Right. Then he you like take a hit, he you listens, pass it on. And you pass it on. And it's just like this whole just wonderful thing, you know, the social right. thing. Uh, so I miss that part of it. I had somebody right. here who loves his pot. Uh, uh, well, I can say his name. A musician, Buddy Love, was here. Uh, right. You remember Buddy. Yeah. And, and uh, he was here, and they he loves his pot, you know. And uh, that's fine, you know, but I just don't think of it that way anymore. But I realized how, when they were here, how sociable it is. You know, you right. pass it to the next person. You're all using the same joint. Right. You know, you're not, everybody doesn't get a joint and then just start smoking it. That wouldn't be any fun. Right. You know. Right, right, right. Well, the pot is so strong these days. I mean, you take two hits, you're pretty much good. Well, what I do when I take pot today uh, is I take it at night if I want to get a little more sleep than I do from my pill that I take, uh, my right. uh, pregabalin. Uh, and I will take a little pot to kind of help it along. you know. But I can't take too much, otherwise it keeps me awake. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah because my head starts thinking about stuff like, you know, Right, right. Things to do. Should I jump out the window or not jump out the window? You know? Right. Good thought. No, Good but thinking it, there. It just I get negative thoughts, so I take just a little bit, you know. Right. But I don't. I'm not that much of a pot person anymore. I just. It just doesn't. I don't. I don't. I become unsociable. I would. I would never take it before we did this interview. Right. Right. I, right. Right. I would sit here going, huh? Okay. Right. Huh? Right. The only time I ever swore on the radio in the old days, uh, when I was on an AM radio station, this was in Minneapolis, I had smoked pot before the show. Okay. And somebody ca called up and said one thing or another, and I said, oh, fuck, I don't care. Huh. I went, what, huh. what did I just say? Right. And I had, I had, I had to push the button on myself, because we, luckily we had a delay. Did you? And that was the last time I ever smoked pot before going on the air. Really? Yeah. I, I, that's an absolute no-no with me. But then I got... Well, if, hmm? as long as you know it. Want me to tell you, you no? Know. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I'm not... I, I tell you, I, I got IM'd again from somebody who listens to the show, watches the show. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, we actually have viewers. Oh, we actually have viewers. Yeah. That's amazing to me. Anyway, here's the thing. I hope I'm not monopolizing the conversation, but I remember that I, I had this woman I knew. Her name was Ginger J. Walker. I know that's a weird name, J. Walker. Right. Uh, but Ginger J. Walker, and I never forget her name. And uh, she hung out in Ibiza in Spain with a bunch of people, including Clifford Irving. Remember, he did that whole thing about Howard Hughes. He wrote the fake right. book. Yeah. Right, right. She was the babysitter to Clifford Irving in Ibiza when he was writing this book. So anyway, I got to know her. And right. she, in Spain, they had this pill. They were tend to a little blue box called Dormadinas. And what, okay. what Dormadinas were, were half a dose of Quaalude. Oh, really? Yes. But they sold them over the counter. I was told you could buy them over the counter. First time I went there, it was like I went in to buy condoms. I went, uh, do, you, uh, uh, you, uh, do you have... Uh, and right. then I said, uh, Dormadina. Uh, and right. I went, oh, Metacolone. Yes, they do. Right. right? And uh, they gave me a box of it. So then I went around to every pharmacy in town and to, it's on the shelf you pick it up Dormadinas really yeah so now I wind up in Ibiza and they're happy that I brought the Dormadinas 
Oh, and, I bet. And I didn't want to take him back with me because I was worried about taking him back to the United States. But I know somebody who came back with 100 boxes of that stuff. And then she said, oh, it's Poisuenio. It's for sleep. Right. And they let her right. right through because they didn't recognize the drug as right. Quaaludes. Right. So, so anyway, she comes back from Ibiza with a ton of, of Quaaludes. I think she was the one that got 100 boxes through. Right. And you could sell them here for a decent price. So anyway, she as she said, oh, let's do a Dormadina. I said, I had to do a show at 2, and I went, what time is it? Oh, it's uh, it's 7 o'clock. Yeah, it'll wear right. off. It'll wear off by the time I go on the air at 2 in the morning. So uh, I take... Uh, I take the quail, I take the Dormadina, and we're eating dinner and so on and so forth. She says, "How you feeling?" I said, "Didn't hit." I said, "Really?" She said, "Here, have another one. Maybe it just was a dud or something like that. You know, right, these are right. made, these are made in Spain. It could be a dud." So I take another one. About an hour passes. She says, "How you feeling? You high?" I went, "No, I'm not high." She says, well, "Why don't you try another one?" I'm looking at my watch. I'm going. Well, I got, I got five hours till the show, right. so it'll wear off by five hours. Yeah, give me the Dormadina. I take it. We're now driving back uh, uh, to uh, away from where we were eating, which was in Chinatown, and she says, "So, uh, how's how you feeling?" I said, "Nothing." Really? She said, really? Nothing. Well, okay. I leave her off. I go to the station. The show goes on at two o'clock. About two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, my guest is Jack Nicholson. Oh, really? Yeah. And we're sitting there at this table doing the interview, and all of a sudden, all three Dormadinas hit me at the same time. I bet. Somehow, my stomach just said, eh, we're not ready. Right. We're not ready. Hold on. Okay, let him through now. Right. And right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm interviewing Jack Nicholson, and during a commercial break, I look at him and I said, "Sorry, man, I'm really wrecked." And he right. says in that typical Nicholson voice, and I'll remember, it rings in my ears. He said to me, "You look it, pal." Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! And we went back to the interview, and he just started talking and did most of the interview. It was the second time I'd ever interviewed him. Oh really? Yeah, and and it wasn't that he wasn't high. He took my girlfriend who was there that night, a girl I knew, up to the bathroom and co gave her some coke. So you know, Jack, so he was loaded too. Oh, he was loaded too. But you look it, pal. You know, was he, <laughs> you know, was he a nice guy? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Jack. Jack. I once described Jack Nicholson as being the kind of guy who's a big star, and when he walks into a room, you feel you've known him all your life. Really? Yeah, he makes it that easy on you. You never felt you were with a big star. Right. You know, he was just one of the guys. All right. You know, and even that, you look at pal, you know, was yeah. kind of a very light way of saying, I looked wrecked. Uh, right. And he was, he was very decent. Very decent. I I oh I did him twice. Interviewed him twice, and in both cases found him to be delightful. I don't remember the really? I don't remember the second time as much. Right. I just, bet. I just remember you look at pal. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. But quaaludes. Man, I haven't heard the word that quaaludes. I haven't heard that in years. That was a great drug for fucking on. Yes. Yes. If you could get a gal. To take quaaludes with you, you were getting laid. Yes, yeah, it was. You know? it, it, for sure, for sure. It was. Oh, it was a done deal. Yeah. Now, uh, also, there's another drug. What was it? Uh, uh, ecstasy. Right. I had this one woman who said, "You want to try ecstasy?" And I went, eh, "It's kind of dangerous, isn't it?" And then I looked it up, and it isn't dangerous. It is not considered really? a dangerous drug. No doctors say ecstasy is. Uh, it's not habit forming. You know, and all it does is put you in a very euphoric state. You know, you start feeling the couch. You know, oh it, it, really? It's one of those things. You know, touchy right. feel, everything's feeling. And when you have sex on it, oh my God, it's wonderful. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm not never done ecstasy. 
I'm not suggesting that anybody go out and do ecstasy, but it is not bad for you. It's not terrible for you. You know. Well, actually, neither is heroin until you get hooked on it. Well, that's true. <laughs> Heroin's okay until you get hooked on it. Right, know? right. Yeah. Uh, what is it about heroin that, for instance, attracted you? I didn't. I didn't want to be more alert, like on cocaine. I wanted to be unalert. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be down and out of it. And also the opiate dreams. You dream a lot on on heroin. Mm -hmm. Were they? Oh, while you're still awake, like a waking dream. What What kind of dreams were they? I don't know how to describe them. Kind of like rolling, swirling dreams. Somebody said to me once when I asked him to describe how he felt on on heroin, he said you can't describe it. Right. It's like getting dipped in honey from the inside. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm at a late age now. Maybe I should get on heroin. I don't think that's a wise choice. Well, I mean, come on. You know, my doctors will prescribe any drug that I want because they, ah, at your age, you, you, how long, if you get it, you get addicted to it, so what? Right. You know, that's their attitude. So, I mean, it could really? Hold, yeah, it could hold for heroin. You know. Yeah, but I don't think you can get a prescription for it in this country. Oh. No, you you, have to, you can you can go to England and get a prescription I'll for tell heroin. You, you can kind of get a prescription. I mean, the opioids they have out are some of them are stronger than heroin. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and easily as addictive. Oh, absolutely! All opiates, are, uh, opioids are addicting. Uh, uh, OxyContin is uh, you know is a major, and it's all it's, everybody whether whether you're an addict or not, you will get addicted to opioids because. They get in your into your bones. They get into your body. Yeah. You know, you become physically addicted. Right. Where, whereas, like, you know, like cocaine, you become mentally addicted. That's why the detox is so easy. There's really no detox physically with, from from cocaine. Whereas there is one with uh, heroin. Yeah, but or it's, as some people but, like to call it heroin. How long was the detox? So I hear it's very short in comparison to other things. Like they, what was it, uh, uh, methadone, for right, instance. Right, methadone, methadone, methadone gets into your bones. Yeah. Heroin gets into your muscles and, and, and methadone gets into your bones. Yeah. Methadone yeah. is very difficult to get off Supposedly, of. Supposedly methadone is a three month detox. Where her oh, yeah. heroin is only one to five days. No, probably more like seven days. Okay, but nevertheless, much shorter. Right. A lot of people who Although got, the hardest the hardest drug to get off of is benzodiazepines. You know, like Valium and Xanax and Clonopin. Oh really? I have a whole bottle of Xanax sitting over here. Well uh, I I don't take it very often. Right. You know, I took well, you, I take it for sleep, but I don't take right. it because I'm taking the pregabalin now. I don't take it with the pregabalin because it kind of doubles the disorientation. So I don't I don't take it anymore. Although I'm going to the really? doctor tomorrow and I'm going to get my yearly supply, you know. But a yearly uh, supply? Well, he gives me ninety, and I get use right. that over a year. And I, I, I have four bottles sitting in the house. I haven't used. Really? Let me give you my address. Oh, okay, okay. Do you still do those? No. No, you don't do anything. No. You don't drink. No. You know. Well, I drink. I drink water. Does that count? No, yeah, it counts. It counts. No, but so I drink. You drink coffee, I'm sure. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, does that does coffee wake you up? It doesn't wake me up. No, not really. Not really. I think it does, but it doesn't really. You know, that's another drug that if you take it for years and years and years, the effect that it has is not as good as when you first take it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everybody has coffee. You can go to any shop and get coffee, but that's a drug. Sure. Yeah, it's an upper. Uh, and you can be addicted to coffee. I know people have been addicted to it. Sure, but, and when they stop, they get headaches. Or when they stop to get head. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, they uh, stop, headache. they get headaches. Headaches. What do I care about head? I'm 81. They put, punctured my prostate to a fairly well. 
You know, I got nothing right. left. I got nothing left to live for. You know. Nah, yeah, right. All right. Right. So why don't you just lay down and call it a ball game? Well, the thing is that I'm just so afraid of death. I can't do that. So, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 You know, I'm afraid of. I I don't understand the idea of not existing. So you believe once we're, we're, we're dead, that's it? That's it. Boom, no more. But there's a chance. There's a very small chance that we go to another dimension. You know, I, I do believe in string theory, and I do believe in all of that. There are many layers of, uh, of the universe, and that there's right. another layer of us in another part of the, of the universe. Uh, now, do you, do you think... You think you need to be buried or being cremated is still cool? I don't think it matters. You d you dissolve anyway. Right, you right, know, right, so, right. You know, I don't know that that is going to carry on to the next. But but what I'm saying is we have all these levels of existence. I'm trying to remember what they call them, dimensions, okay? Right. And under string theory, there's something like seven of them, they figure. And then in all of those, the same you're living the same life. Okay, if you, really? Yes. Uh, and that, uh, but you may, it, it, some of the results may be different. You know, right. Like I may have gone into real estate in dimension two, or I may have killed myself in dimension three, or whatever, you know. Right, whatever. What if? And I believe there's a space between the dimensions as well. And if you get trapped in that space, it's kind of hell in a way. But I don't know. You know, I don't know any of this. I will. No, nobody does. We will. Nobody does because nobody's come back. We will find it. Nobody's come back to be able to say, "Hey, um, I." We're running a little bit over here, but fuck it. Houdini's wife, for years, right. held seances because after his death, he said, "If I, if there is such a thing, because they were trying to debunk all this, right? If there is such a thing, I will do everything I can to come back to you." Right. Right. And never happened. None of these seances, she would hold one once a year. And none of them did he appear. Right. Yeah, so. right, right. Right. Anyway, we gotta go, friend. All right, man. God, this is just I love this. I could talk to right. you for the I could talk to you for the rest of the show and say right. fuck all those other people, you know, but Nah. But I like them and I wanna have them say what they gotta say. Right. But right. Uh, anyway, we'll get together again with you next week. Yes, same time, same place. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Kravitz. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah, 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 there's Stephen. I, you know, as I said, I, 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 I wouldn't mind doing a whole hour and a half with him. It's just our discussions just get so good, and... Um, He's so easy to talk to. He's wonderful. By the way, tomorrow night, uh, Will Durst. Uh, we did an interview with him last Saturday, and Will Durst, who is still in a hospital bed, uh, will be here. So uh, you might check in for that. I think that you'll find it interesting. We kind of get an update on how he's doing and so on and so forth. Okay, let me uh, admit all these people here are dying to get onto this program for God knows what reason. Uh, and uh, wait until we got them all in here. There we go. Okay. And uh, we got, uh, let's see here. Jeff Stein doesn't have a picture right now. Um, and we're being joined by Vernon Nunn. Uh, uh, over there, we got William Ferguson. Uh, we got uh, Charlie Wallace. My God, as I live and breathe, no baseball tonight, huh? Nope. Nope. Uh, for the next two weeks, actually. Yeah, truckers. No, next two weeks. So we'll have you for the next two weeks. Uh, yeah, I do have games Friday, and then I'm done until the end of September. Oh, good. Well, I'm. Uh, I uh, great. I. Uh, however, I will be uh, off for one week. What week? Just is my luck. No, the last week of this month, which uh, you know, last week in September. Mainly because I'm having my eyes done, and I don't want to do a show the first couple of nights with the eyes mm -hmm. the way they are. And they're going to look ugly. They're going to look horrible anyway uh, by the time we get into the next week. But I'll wear dark glasses at that point, and I think I'll probably be ready to do a show. 
you know. Uh, Jeff, are you there? I'm here. We, no picture. We have no picture, no Jeff. No picture? No. Well, what time did I do? You probably turned your camera off. Here, wait, I'll send you a message here. I guess so. I'll send you a message to turn on your picture. Wait a minute. Ask to start video. Okay, did you just get that? Okay. Okay. And uh, let's see if that works. That works. See? Ta -da. Hey! Ba -da 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 -da. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, isn't technology terrific? Mm -hmm. now, where's that audio coming from? Is it coming me. from? Is it coming from you, Jeff? Jeff, mute mute yourself. A I don't second. have anything off, so. Mute yourself a second. Okay. Yeah, it's you. It's you, Jeff. The sound's coming from your end. You probably got the browser up. You see, and turn on your audio again. Yeah, unmute yourself, Jeff. Unmute yourself, Jeff. All right, all right. And that sounds okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it was. It was your browser or something. It stopped. Yeah. It stopped. Hey, Charlie. Oh, uh, hi. Hi, William. Hey. I was going to wear my Drake Equation shirt tonight in your honor. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm got a coffee up here, you know. Mm. I just had mine. And my, when is your surgery, Alan? My uh, surgery is the 28th, I think, of the month. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I imagine it's going to be fairly painless. I don't think they want me to be in pain. So, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's, uh, you know, uh, supposedly the recovery isn't terrible. It's just for f three days I have to keep my eyes well, iced for three days. So. Well, we wish you a speedy recovery. And Alex. if I don't ice them, what happens is it just takes longer for the stuff to get better. It's supposedly to help the black and blue. So it'll look like I got beat the crap out of, you know. Irish sunglasses? Huh? <laughs> Irish sunglasses? I'm going to wear sunglasses, yeah. No, Irish sunglasses. Oh, Irish sunglasses. <laughs> okay. I thought that was a Chicago yeah. term. Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I had a medical procedure today. Did you? Yeah. I got That's my third COVID, COVID shot. Ah, I got my flu shot today. You did you really? I can't get my, I got my second Moderna jab today. Yeah, I got my third. Uh, and I'm so I guess I'm good to go. But they, they couldn't fill out the card because Marjorie laminated the card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good for her. Yeah. And my card too. Oh, yeah. Good for her. They can't. They, <laughs> hey, they, can't, they said we have no. We'd, la we'd write in on it, but we don't have anything. So they gave us a, 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 a proof of uh, all the all the inoculations we've gotten over the last couple of years, and the very last one is the Moderna. So we just show that, and also I can update my uh, my Excelsior pass in about a week. They say it takes about a week to get the information to the state. So anyway, so I got my third shot. So I guess I'm good to go. Who knows? You know. They'll probably say it doesn't work, but my arm is hurting. Yeah. And, and I today I was feeling a little tired after the shot. I don't know why. I think the tiredness was. Uh, Marjorie said, "Well, she didn't get sick till the next day," and I seem to remember her having symptoms that day. You know. But uh, the next day was the worst for me. Well, let's see how I do tomorrow because I'm supposed to go to my doctor tomorrow. Because I have to get the pre-surgical thing, you know, from him before they can do surgery on me to say I'm fine and I'm going to get my yearly checkup at the same time. So, well, my first Moderna jab was pretty rough. I, I had a low-grade fever and I ached all, all over. And, well, that's fine. It's a small price to pay for safety. Yeah. Right, right. But, but now, I, with the second jab, I, I feel great, except those veterinarians at Walmart to like tore me up on my right arm. Do you want to know something? This shot today, I, I mentioned it to Marjorie, and she said the same thing. We didn't even feel it. Well, I didn't feel it going in, but I felt it going out. You felt it coming out? Yeah. Why? Okay, he did something, yeah. and uh, yeah, it, I felt it coming out, and 
Boy, does my arm hurt. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, my arm's hurting a little bit now, you know, and I'm feeling a little punky, you know. But uh, yeah. so I'll go to my doctor tomorrow and say, hey, I'm sick, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, because I've, I've had the third flu shot. I'm, I'm the only person I know who has had the third flu shot so far. My sister. Your sister has? Yep. Actually, if you, if you live in New York... Who, who is anybody here from New York? Well, um, Connecticut. You can probably go into your into your uh, pharmacy now and say, "Hey, you know, in your case, uh, Jeff, you can say, I oh, have, yeah. you know, uh, 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 preconditions and so on, and give me the third shot." Yeah. Eight months. They won't let me get the third shot yet. Eight months. Eight months. Well, they won't let you get abortions in that state, and they won't let you vote. So what do you expect? <laughs> But I can get ten grand if I turn somebody in. Yeah, let's oh, see here. Cool. Anybody want to go drive somebody to an abortion so that uh, and we can we can make Charlie some money, you know? Hey, actually, if Charlie decides to do that, I'm going to uh, pull up a, a Supreme Court uh, decision in 1982 mm-hmm. that said that the state of Texas cannot outsource enforcement of their state laws to individuals who are not uh, answerable to the public. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know, Excellent. Wait, I know that one. I know that one. It was on Jeopardy. Markin versus Grin- Grindel uh, yep. Den. Grindel's Den. Oh, that's what you were talking. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That was in Massachusetts, and that involved a liquor license. Grindel's Den wanted to get a liquor license, but the Massachusetts law said that the church could object to it and they could essentially veto a liquor license if the establishment was within so many hundred feet of one of their churches Mm -hmm. and that went to the supreme court and the supreme court says you can't do that they don't like competition they they did that here in new york with porn places yeah you couldn't be within a hundred feet of a church but that was in the 70s wasn't it yeah. Well, it's the enforcement part that you cannot yeah. you cannot outsource. Well, you cannot, like in Texas, okay, they're saying that they are outsourcing individuals to go after anyone who helps someone get an abortion. That's outsourcing yeah. enforcement of yeah. the law to that, people who are not answerable to the public. Listen, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff wrong with what's going on in, in Texas, and the Supreme Court didn't exactly turn it down. No, but that was the excuse they used not to to stay it. By the way, I turned in Governor Abbott. Did you? Did yeah. you? Ted yeah. Cruz. A lot of people are turning in Ted Cruz. Wait a yeah, minute. I, I, I turned in Governor Abbott. When that site was up, I turned him in. William, you're not in uh, in Texas, are you? You don't have to be in Texas to do you it. You don't have to be. Oh, yeah, great. exactly. Well, let's all call Anybody up. in the whole country. Oh, okay. I, so I turned him in. <laughs> did he aid? Did he aid in a bet an abortion? Your, your checks in the mail, William. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and I promise yes. I won't come in your mouth. Yeah, exactly. That's two of the famous lies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do they say fuck you in Hollywood? Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> right. I think the three, the four famous lies, the the two we just said, checks in the mail won't come in your mouth. Brown is beautiful. And the fourth one, in the case of the government, we're here to help. <laughs> well, that was a Reagan line. That's uh, what Reagan said. Yeah. That was Reagan, yeah. 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 Well, don't you work in government, Mr. Reagan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I ain't going to help you either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. I think he was from Texas, wasn't he? Who, Reagan? Reagan? No. No, Reagan no. from California. Yeah, he's no, he's California. At, no, he's actually from... Uh, He's from the Actually, Illinois. Somewhere. I think Illinois yeah. worked at a radio station there, uh, and uh, started out in radio. Yeah. He claimed to be related to Lincoln. Huh? He claimed to be related to Lincoln. No, I don't think he did. No. Okay. No. Where do you get your information? Uh, probably some of it from Phil. The same place as you do. <laughs> Well, is that to say that it's I just get my hearing aids work? The University of Phil. Boy, he's sure sure being mean tonight, isn't he? No, yeah. no, not really. No, he's just being Alan. 
Just being Alan. I'm not going to be here long. Why? I got to go take care of my mother. No, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll say what my father used to say to me when I say something like, I can't stay here long, and he said to me, "How how long can you stay?" And I said, "I don't know, a couple of minutes or something." Why? He says, "Why can't you leave now?" <laughs> <laughs> you, and, you and I are alike with the snide comments, Alex. No, I'm not. Except I'm mine are funny. I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you leave now? Wow. Yeah, I want to leave now. <laughs> Bye, Alan. See ya. <laughs> I came on because you're on the show, William. I haven't seen you since last week. Oh, yeah. Everybody else I've seen. Oh, except for Trucker Steve. <laughs> hey, Excuse how me, are you doing? I must say, Steve's looking a lot better, isn't he? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, he is looking better, looking healthier, you feeling better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, any word on when you're going to get the kidney? Nothing yet. No, COVID's holding up everything. Like uh, the hospital where I go for dialysis, they are um, they're humming and hawing because they're waiting for the province to decide whether to give people the third shot. Jesus, you need to, you need to, so you need to. I have to, if I'm supposed to get a hepatitis shot. Right. It's one of the things I have Wait to minute, get. Let me, let, me, and then, let me ask you this. You have to get a hepatitis shot, but you have, uh, you've, you've lost both your kidneys, haven't you? Have you lost function in both of them? Or have you lost both of them? Uh, I can still pee, so there's still... They said they were real, they were no good anymore, but I can still urinate, so I don't think they're completely dead, but... Oh my God. Mm. I knew you were going to say that. What's your blood type? Uh, a negative, I think. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, shit, I'd give you mine if I could, but wow. I'm sorry, man. That's wow. Yeah, who is What's yours in case we can find somebody? Wait a minute, we have somebody new here. Uh, turn on your microphone there, Wesley. This is Wesley Curry. Hello, Wesley. How are you? I'm fine. Yourselves? Fine. What uh, made you decide to call? Well, uh, I'm 60 years old. I've uh, been through enough relationships with women that I ended up single. I saw some guys my age talking. Yeah. And I just thought I would listen for a minute see if I, it was something I might have something to say about and just listen for a little bit. Well, first, just join in on anything here. This is like, you know, it's, it's, we, we, we don't have topics here. We don't. <laughs> I'm, a little bit, I'm a little bit brutish. I may, uh, I may talk about things that uh, if you're on an airliner, you'd be grabbing for the barf bag. <laughs> no, so, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't want to upset your clam chowder. If I can, if I'm going to throw up, I'll, uh, I'll mute myself. Uh, okay. Oh, you'll fit right yeah. in just fine. We were here. talking with Trucker <laughs> Steve because Trucker Steve lost uh, function in his kidneys. And so why are they giving you thing? You're getting you a hepatitis shot. I mean, can you get hepatitis if you don't have kidneys? Yeah. Uh, it's a vaccine I'm supposed to get for the process of getting a kidney. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Oh. Right. So they, they won't give it yet until they decide if we're getting a third shot. Okay. Supposed to take it like a month after. Now, have they approved the third shot in Canada? No, no? it has to come from the province, from the government. Oh, I see. And they haven't uh, authorized it yet. No, oh, okay. They haven't approved it here right. either. Uh, so, have, you, have you been uh, vaccinated, uh, 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 Wesley? Yes, I got the Pfizer. I just got my second shot yeah. uh, about five days ago. Oh, good for you. Congratulations. And where are you from, Wesley? I am mostly from Chicago, where I was musical director for The Second City. Oh, I wow. scored a feature film with Tom Arnold and Jim O'Hare, who was Gary in Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I took the money from the film, and I wanted to write some symphonies. So I moved to my old home state, West Virginia, where I... Uh, the rent was the cheapest in the country, and I could sit back and tell the oboes what to do without bothering anybody. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of, uh, uh, 
it, it kind of makes me feel good listening to you because my father was a musician. Uh, he was a uh, he was a violinist. And, huh? Yeah, and uh, so I grew up with music. I grew up with people in music. You know. So you have a sophisticated ear a little bit beyond what they play on the radio, I would hope. I have such a sophisticated ear that I can't stand it when I hear, hear somebody sing a clam. You know, <laughs> I, I just, I, I have this, I, I, I'd be sitting there with Marjorie watching television, there'd be some woman singing or something, I'll go, she's off key. And it drives her nuts because she can't hear it, you know. Uh, and, and most people can't. I can. You, you can? Yeah. 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 Uh, but my father, uh, uh, he, he taught me a lot about music. The biggest lesson he ever gave me is there's no bad kind of music and there's no good kind of music. There's Your just, father wasn't there, around there's with There's rap. just bad music and good music. <coughs> you know? The badly done music and, and well done music. So uh, I gained an appreciation for just about every musical idiom. So. <laughs> Did your father live long enough to hear rap? No, oh, yeah. no, he might have. He might have uh, changed his opinion. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. So, That's how long did you do stuff with the Second City? I was with Second City in the nineties. Uh -huh. I was only there for one season. I was playing uh, piano. The audience would throw up suggestions and say, "We want to hear. Uh, we want a scene of Arnold Schwarzenegger as the." Queen of England buying a chocolate candy bar, and so I would have to I would have to write the music on the piano spontaneously to go along with what the comedians were yeah. improvising on stage. I worked with Horatio Sanz personally, who was in the famous cowbell sketch with Christopher Walken on yeah. Saturday Night Live. Yeah, right. He was, he was one of the guitar players in that sketch. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, a, a lot of a lot of the people for Saturday Night Live came out of Second City. I mean, most of them did. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, grew up in Chicago. I've been to Second City. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I was not even a comedian. I lived at Diversity North and Clark in that neighborhood for ten years. Uh, right there on Clark Street, not far from Wrigley Field, about ten blocks. I worked in Chicago for a uh, short short time. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember what years. Uh, I went, came to New York in 1969, so it was about 1968. Okay. Ooh. Uh, yeah, the, the Chicago convention was going on. Yeah. That's yeah. back when Mr. Kelly's was in there where uh, the Gibson Steakhouse is now, I think. Yeah, and uh, so, so was a, a mayor by the name of... Uh, Daly. Daly, yeah. Yeah. The old Daly. Senior. Yeah, but anyway... Um, when I was there, I got to know a guy who owned a movie theater. I think it was called the Chicago Theater. And he had turned it into a repertory house where every day he would have a, an, another double bill. But it was always great stuff. You could go in there and see these two movies and he'd pick great movies. Mm -hmm. So I got to know him and then afterwards we would go to Old Town, to the Old Town, mm -hmm. to, a, to, a, to a kind of a bar there. My and, stopping ground. And we would yep. sit in a in a booth, and be joined by Roger Ebert. Oh yeah! Oh wow! And these I two believe. these two guys between them started playing games with each other in playing trivia, movie trivia with each other. And they'd ask this question, this guy would ask that question, and they go back and forth and back and forth. Well, after about five sessions with these guys doing this, I started to get into it. And I started picking up trivia myself and started joining in on it, you know. And now when I watched movies, I was watching old movies with a different kind of viewpoint. I was looking for a good question, you know. And that's, I didn't say it would be difficult to stump Ebert. Ebert was yeah. it, amazing. He was, mm -hmm. But I, I learned everything I knew about trivia in movies from Roger Ebert. And uh, I saw him a couple of years later when he came to New York for the opening of a movie. Uh, and uh, he, he remembered me, and he remembered those sessions at the old, in Old Town that we would have. And uh, um, he also, I, I mentioned to him, I said, by the way, I loved your movie. And he said, what movie was that? And I said, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. And he went, shh. 
don't tell anybody. Uh, but but that that's how I learned all about trivia and movies. I mean, I have a great amount of uh, information stuffed in this head because of Roger Ebert. So, that was my best memory of Chicago. The worst memory of it was going to the demonstrations during the convention, getting tear gas. That was the worst. You know. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, well, my memory of Chicago was I used to date this girl that lived not too far from Wrigley Field, and we were having sex. And just when she was about to orgasm, they had a game going, and you know the applause. <laughs> so you hung a big W out your window. <laughs> yes, so while she was having an orgasm, you heard da 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 da. da. Yeah, and everybody cheering. Bum 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 bum. You gotta bum, time it better or something. Yeah. You guys had to start a little later. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. I, I, I ran into uh, Giuliani once at Wrigley Field. Really? Rudy Giuliani. Really? He was at a, he was at a Cubs game, and I went up to say hello to him, and I uh, he was not a friendly person. I uh, he doesn't sound like he was. No, he wasn't I mean, even in his times when he was admired as the mayor of New York, I mean, you remember when he was America's mayor? Mm -hmm. uh, now he's America's mayor, but it's the horse's ass. But anyway, uh, 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 he, he uh, uh, yeah, he, I, you know, I had my, I had a prostate thing for prostate cancer where they put seeds in your prostate. And the guy who put the seeds in my prostate was the same guy that did Rudy Giuliani's seeds when he had the prostate thing about 20 years ago. Mm. So my my ass was filled with the same hand that was up to Rudy Giuliani's ass. Are you going to go crazy in 20 years? I kind of feel that, you know, if you talk about seven degrees of uh, separation, that's a good one. Or six degrees of separation. Hopefully the doctor changed gloves between the two. Years. Well, hopefully, yeah, he yeah. Did. that was twenty possible. years. Yeah, it's possible that he changed gloves. I never once mentioned to this doctor that I knew what he did, because I'm sure whenever anybody finds out, it's thanks. You know, <laughs> he, he, he could have done us a favor by screwing up. You know, <laughs> you're in New York now. Yeah, I've been here, God, forever been here for since 2004 since i was what a part of new york i live in harlem i live in harlem wow yeah wow uh and uh it you know it's not the it's not the neighborhood it used to be you know all mm -hmm. every neighborhood in new york is like gentrified oh. you mm -hmm. know and and in harlem when i first moved here i kind of liked it because it was a little edgy you know mm -hmm. and it was basically, it was just black people. And now, you know, I, I was, we were maybe the only white people in this building. And now... Oh, they you put me in a white, black neighborhood. I'll, you, just, you could just see gentrification in my wake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, Starbucks, how'd that get here? Yeah, but what, what's terrible about it, what, what's terrible about it is, is that the gentrification brings with it a lack of character. Yes, it does. You know, Harlem, for all the poverty that it may have had and all the uh, all the, 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 the the negatives about it as a as a neighborhood, the fact was it had flavor, and it had a had something going for it, and it it doesn't have that now. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I I don't I you couldn't walk the streets after seven o'clock at night when I first moved in here. Now I can walk at three o'clock in the morning and not have anything to worry about. Yeah. Oakland was mostly the same way until recently. Yeah, well, Oakland was terrible. Uh, yeah, right. Oakland, most Oakland, you don't want to be walking around at three in the morning. Hmm. So yeah. it's still a very high crime city. Still, I mean, it depends on where you're at in that city. So. Well, New York, we got a lot of high crime now. I mean, we got a lot of, uh, you know, shootings. Yeah, they're up in San Francisco and Oakland, too. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean... Oh, uh, you, huh? you did something, Alex, in the arts in some way? You sound like you've got a little bit more of an adventuresome character to move into Harlem. Were you there in the 70s during the... Before the Koch no, era? I would have never... Really I would have never... I would have never been here in the 70s. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, I lived in New York in the 70s. And then I left San, New York and moved to San Francisco. And then when I left San Francisco in about 2004, came back to New York to work. Okay. So, you know, uh, I don't know if you know my background, but I was in the radio business. And, ah. uh, you know, had hit well, If you were in New York, you may have heard of uh, Henry Fogel, who I think was in, uh, he ran the classical part of a station in New York before he became the president of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. Hmm, that, I, I don't know him. I don't know okay. him. Okay. Um, you see, I, I, he's, he's hmm. told me, and I've heard that he's got the largest collection of classical CDs and albums on earth. Really? Uh, yeah. He, he became the president of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Then he was the... Uh, Dean of the Music School at Roosevelt there on Michigan Avenue. Now he just does consulting work, does a few classes at Roosevelt, and uh, works on his Szechuan. He's a, he's 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 fascinated with Szechuan uh, cooking, and he's learning how to do that now. Really? Oh, okay. Ask Alex, Alex about his lovely time in Miami. <laughs> no, let's oh, not even that. let's not even get into that. Alex, don't you that. still have a neighbor who yeah, restores? Boy. What, 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 oh, I hear. Yeah, what, what were we gonna say, Vernon? And he might uh, be interested. Don't you? Don't you have a neighbor who restores Stradivarius violins? I have a neighbor who is right across wow. this wall from me. I could knock on the wall, and he'd hear me. Who uh, has a? There's a company he wor he works for as part of, or I don't know if he owns part of it. That sell and buy and sell and restore classic violins so we were invited to come up for coffee and I went up for coffee and he said uh, and I mentioned my father was a violinist you know and he said then I got something to show you and he goes into this room and he has to you know touch on the keypad to unlock the door opens the door takes me in then opens up this safe and pulls out three violins Stradivarius. he says that's a Strad, this is a Strad, and that's a Strad. There's only like 300 of those in the world. Uh, I don't know how many there are, but all I know is that total amount of worth of these three violins that were sitting in Priceless. front of us, $12 million. Yeah, at least. Yeah. I would faint. And I said, can I put one under my chin? And he said, sure. And he took one out, and I put it under my chin. Oops. And he said, "You really?" He said, "You really know how to uh, how to hold a violin?" I said, "Yeah, my father was a violinist." I said, "Dad would be proud of me right now." You know, I've got a strad under my chin. Um, he, uh, but he, he, you know, he was a, you know, he, he was a lover of music and. Uh, just worked, he worked all, he was what you call a journeyman violin, work a dance band one night, the next night he'd be working the symphony. The next night mm -hmm. he'd be working the ballet, the next night he'd be working uh, uh, something, a radio show. He was a union man. Oh yeah, oh absolutely, yeah. And uh, you know, it was a, I, I loved growing up that way because I got, I grew up in an unusual home. No, no kid in the neighborhood understood what my father did. I said, he's a musician. They went, does he make money at that? You know, and of course, yeah, he yeah. made enough money to, you I know. That, I, I've asked that quite a bit, actually. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah. Like, do you make any money playing music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you play music, right? Yeah, I do. I, I play music. I play synthesizers and bass guitar. I mean, I'll be playing in a country band one night and... Next night I'll be doing some EDM at some club somewhere, but yeah. I mean prior to COVID, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there hasn't been there hasn't been a whole lot of gigs coming my way. By though. the way, speaking of COVID, if, uh, yeah, I don't want to depress everybody out there with COVID talk, but the fact is, did you, did you see the two hundred and fifty thousand children have COVID right now? Yeah, no, I didn't see that. Yes. Unnecessarily, two twenty-seven thousand in Texas alone. And how, and how many of them have died? Yeah. I think there've been a, quite a few deaths. Yeah. 
and the yeah. other half are in Florida. Yeah, and, and and the whole attitude is, oh hey, uh, you know, kids don't die of this. Remember when Bush. Trump told us that kids don't die of it, so we don't need to vaccinate them. Oh, I had somebody tell me the other day, oh, kids don't bring home contagions and, and diseases. Oh, you obviously don't have any kids. That's right. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, or I've had I've sense. had parents say that they bring home more cooties. Mm -hmm. You know, they Every go to September. They go to a classroom. They the dog because my kids brought home. Well, they go to they go to a, a school and those Anything classrooms are a petri You day. caught it, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. Oh, good night, gentlemen. Okay. Good night, Alan. Say hello Hi, to your mother. Okay. Good night, sir. Okay. Yeah, he's got to go. He's got to go. Take care of his mother. Isn't he a good son? Yes, he is. I haven't even put a headstone on my mother's grave for crying out loud. Your Bad. mom lives going to get. A, your mother lives. Get around to that someday, yeah. Alex. I, I I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to it. I mean, I just you know I, I talk to who I don't know who I talk to. But I said that one night on the air, I said, what a bad son I am. My mother's grave still doesn't have a tombstone on it. And they said to me, neither does my mother's, that they never got around to it. You know, I mean, if, if our parents were caring about us after their death, they'd, have, they'd get cremated. You know, we wouldn't have to worry about, you know, tombstone at $3,000 and a funeral at 10 and uh, this yeah. and that and, you know. I mean, when my mother died, thank God I had enough money that I could pay for a funeral for her. She well, darn me, I'm just going to stand in a nuclear bomb, not be harmed, fly through the air, land, have a twisted leg, meet Allah, Satan incarnate, tell him a little few words about a dream I had, get shot in the head and go to heaven. <laughs> thank God it's a quick death. Thank you, thank you, to show that it's a quick death. I, if it were a long, drawn-out cancer, I would be looking at Dr. Korvorkian without doubt. Yes. I, it's going to be a quickie. I want a quickie. Yeah. Uh, where is Dr. Korvorkian these days? He's still alive, isn't he? No, he no, died. Did he, he die? Yeah, he, yeah, he died. Me. Oh, okay. Natural causes? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I believe I have the most important thing to say on earth in our generation. All right. And I want to, I want to challenge you to listen to me for three or four minutes about it. Uh -oh. uh oh, because I met this old boat maker years ago and I gave him a plum and it turns out that he gave me his dove and that although I'm not allowed to do it on TV, I can speak and interpret every language known to mankind. And I know some words that I'm not to say outside the house or write down on paper. Let's just say it's not uh, blah is a mutt. Uh, and um I had a dream. Okay. And a dream I saw a valley as I was standing on a hill. Okay. On the right mm -hmm. and on the left, I saw trees. Mm -hmm. The trees on the left, straight, no curves, no branch in a row. The trees on the right, curved, none of them straight, no branches. The trees on the right, the top leaves, were palm and dark green, and the bottom half were dark green with orange red, and they had weeds under them. It was night with a full moon and a bronze aura around the moon on a starless heaven. All the stars were gone. On the horizon, I could not tell if it was morning or if it was evening. I could also not tell you where the water in the river came from or where it was going to. And though it seemed to flow towards me, the surface was still water. Curved like a letter C, wide as a street, that river. The surface like a mirror, reflecting grass growing on its banks. Between that river and the palm trees, I did see a square pit of unknown depth. And in that pit, none dead, none whole, all mixed, but not full. And there was sand that glistened like gold, but was sand under the grass. Behind the pit, I did see two creatures, short with enormous heads and pointing ears. And the ghoul, not a ghoul, creature, 
on the right holding a Caucasian leg of a man. And on the foot of that Caucasian leg of the man, I saw a very clean white sock. And I saw a dirty, dusty, fashionable black shoe. So fashionable it was, it had a square toe. And I watched that creature cut the foot of that leg off on a spinning saw. And then I saw the other creature, who looked just like him, smile at me. And they enjoyed it. They liked doing that. But neither one said any words. And the only sound I heard in that valley of vision was the whirring, which was perfectly honed. It was silver. It was gold into circles made only for cutting mm -hmm. and they spun of themselves and they formed a crooked path and they were all parallel and they were all half up and half in the ground and they were all bigger than my outstretched arms and they were no straight line it was a zigzag zigzag line how long and those uh, two uh, creatures wesley, wesley, they mean something wesley that's and there was green grass wesley wesley <laughs> yes sir how long does this go on that's it. Too long. I that, saw green grass. Oh, okay. Because I don't usually let people read stuff on the show. I'm making it up as off the top of my head. <laughs> really? Really? Because yeah. it well, sounded I've like you... said it about 10,000 times. Oh, so I I'm, see. I'm going to get it memorized one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Then as long as you weren't reading it, fair is nope. fair. You know? I just, nope. I always made it a policy in my radio programs, never let anybody read stuff. Be sure. Because it always sure. became rather elongated and boring, and they wouldn't stop. They just kept reading and reading and reading. But the, I know the, no diss to you. You were doing it off the top of your head, so I can't uh, I can't uh, fault you for that. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to challenge and ask all of you: Would yeah. you say I saw green grass in a dream from Jesus? And that's all oh, I boy. ask you to say. And what that will do... Well, I'm Jewish, and Jesus doesn't speak to me. Yeah, well, you know, I understand that completely. Yeah. Um, well, do you know the pledge of the man of the earth? Yeah, well, I anyway, mean, wait a minute, hold on a second. Charlie has something he wants to say here. Hold I on. just wanted to... First of all, I'm an atheist, so Jesus doesn't speak through me either. <laughs> he doesn't speak to me much either. Jack Kevorkian died in June the 3rd, um, 2011. Yep. Oh, God, I missed a miss that one. But you know something? We got to have a place where you can go and find out who's dead. Because <laughs> no, because I sit around going. I don't going, think like, anybody ever dies. You know, it's possible I, that no one dies. Well, no, but I got a segment. You had a segment on your show, didn't you? Or you and Albert? Yeah. We're, we're what? These are the people who died. a segment on your show. Fruity on Hold on a second. I want to hear Verna. We mean a radio show. On your show on Sirius, yeah. you and uh, you and Albert used to do. These are people who died, died. Well, yeah. Here, yeah. Let me see. Well, he here. did that on the quake. What? You did that on the quake. Yeah, what? You, you and Joe Rogelski, you know, like, you're gonna read off the list of names of the people who died. And you had this big echo. Yeah, I gotta That's stop it though. Other, uh, like, other, uh, fix the AM. Otherwise, I'll get a note from uh, from YouTube. I oh, yeah, can't use that. Uh, That's a uh, copywritten music, you know. Hello to Jack Bishop. Hi, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hello there. Yeah. Hey, heard you talking about. <clears throat> excuse me. Heard you talking about you hadn't uh, gotten a gravestone for your mother. Uh oh. Uh. I think my mom died before yours did, and I haven't done that either. And every few weeks, I think you know, I ought to do that. But the woman's it. been dead for thirty-seven years. Oh Jesus! <laughs> you know, I'm not even. You know, I I know where she's. I know what town she's in, but I don't know what graveyard she's in oh my mother would never forgive me uh, oh. I, well i just looked yeah, up I, 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 gravestone I, before she died i found out where my mother yeah. is buried my father is buried and i know he she's buried right next to him uh, but you know i make the old joke about the fact that I, I just never got around to a tombstone because i she's right next to my father and i thought maybe you should i should pull my father's tombstone 
and put up one larger tombstone to cover both graves, which is what a mm -hmm. lot of people do. And I, I just couldn't figure out what to write on it. And then it hit me one day, and I've been thinking about doing it. And what I was going to say is, here lies Alex and Ruth Schwarzman, parents of, and then in big letters, Alex Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> me. Me. It's all about me. Yeah. Had my mother not been cremated, I think her tombstone would have said, I'm going to hell. That's where all my friends are. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> well, heaven is such a boring place anyway, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's that old joke? Is somebody would die and went to heaven and they had dinner with God and God was serving like, you know, celery and, you know, all these little, you know, this, this, they, they didn't do lunch, they grazed basically. Mm -hmm. And the guy looks down and he sees the people in hell, they're like eating like roast beef and, this big banquet and having a grand old time and and, and the guy says hey uh you know what's up with you know down with hell down there and he says do you know what i gotta go through to cook for two people yeah. <laughs> what, who, where was it i i think i can't remember where it was in the lone star state of texas <laughs> we always remind each other about why the devil is in hell mm -hmm. Charlie, do you know why? Because you're here in Texas. I can tell you. Oh, okay. All right. Somebody tell me. Because he wouldn't tell the vision that I just told you guys. No, oh. no. The devil stays in hell because Texas is too damn hot in the summertime. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah well, I, I know I, people from Port Arthur during the summertime. They're just like, what the hell are we doing in Port Arthur? <laughs> hey, the folks here in Dallas, I've been in Dallas now for two-thirds of my life and every summer i say to myself why in the hell am i still here you know, i mean you were a san francisco boy yeah why didn't you stay there <coughs> uh, you want to you, you want to know how is san francisco well, you, you should ask me You've the same in question san Francisco, because i considered moving there it seemed well, very appealing on the surface i, I love san francisco but i was i was always considered the kid in radio and I wanted to get away from being considered this kid that was, you know, the overnight kid or or before that, just the weekend kid. And um, uh, Alex had already taken off for parts unknown. And uh, as fate would have it, in 1967, I moved to Houston. And the first voice I heard on the radio was my old friend, Alex Bennett, who I had met and and he, he gets tired of me bringing this up mm -hmm. but i met him when i was 13 or 14 years old and he yeah. was probably about 18 and uh that that's our history although he he'd like to forget it yeah well, <laughs> and, uh, uh, well yeah but uh <laughs> no uh the uh i remember meeting you know hang out with you in houston that's where, yeah. where we really became real friends yeah, uh, and and, ta and talking to you over the years, and I think you visited my apartment here in New York on one occasion. Well, I, when you were living in Riverdale, yeah, not Riverdale, but uh, the Bronx. No, that was Riverdale. That was Riverdale. Yeah, I was up there with Archie and Veronica. <laughs> yeah. Hey, tell that to my wife. She still loves Archie. Yeah. Uh, do, do you watch Riverdale then? No, no. I've told her about it, but she. You know, she, she's one of those intellectuals. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Uh, Char Charlie, has, Charlie has his hand up. Yes, Charlie. Yeah. I, every time I walk through the University of Texas campus, I remember exactly why I'm in Texas in the summer. Why? <laughs> co -eps don't wear anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in yeah. that case, Charlie, we got to we got to take you. <clears throat> got to take you to. Um, What's that city just around Santa Rosa? That oh, uh, it's uh, Inverness, where people are known for going naked all over their neighborhood. No, they don't. Some of so these people have aged out in Inverness, there, Jack. <laughs> That's an old. Yeah, now they're all sagging. Yeah. yeah. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> yes. Some of us are. Some of us more than others. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I've lost my mind, but kept my body. No, uh, 
Well, speak for yourself. I've lost my body. I lost my no. I lost my body and kept my mind. Or maybe uh, still. No, I can't remember. Oh yeah. Anyway. Well, you know, can't remember is the second thing to stop working. Yeah. Oh well, that that's that goes yeah. without saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, uh, so uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it's uh, uh, you. How are you feeling? You feeling better? How am I feeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I I went to my regular doctor today. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, first time he's seen me since I had my two great falls and contusion and all of that. Right. And after I wished him Happy New Year, which I haven't done for you, uh, he said to me, well, uh, how did all this happen? And I said, well, you know, I, I got dizzy and I fell uh, uh, one day. And then a few days later, I got dizzy and I fell. And he said, you know, I think your friend Alex Bennett, who I just told him about that you had diagnosed my condition, I, I said, I think he's right. And, uh, you know, he said, let's take a look at everything you're taking. And I was taking three drugs that lower your blood pressure. Yeah, that's it. Plus, I had lost over 35 pounds, which lowers your blood pressure. Hmm. And, and he said, you were doing good to just be able to walk around a little bit and i said well the only thing that bothers me now is my wife says she's going to take my car keys away from me because she's driving yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So we're fighting about that around my well i think that you should think about it in the short term if you don't pass out anymore then you yeah. don't have to really worry about it well that's well that's what i'm doing i was passing out on prevastatin for when they first put me on it well that's what uh uh no, I wasn't passing out on prevastatin. I was passing out because of lisinopril, and also I take uh, metropolol. Oh and, yeah. And I and I also uh, a cousin of mine who's a pharmacist who I was telling all this to over the weekend and uh, got informed that um, my Flomax, you know, the, the old Flomax, man P pill, yeah. Yeah. said that lowers your blood pressure. Well, I'm I'm taking I'm taking taking Flomax, but I'm also taking Cialis, so I'm taking a double dose of that kind yeah. of thing mm -hmm. every day. And I think that's why I'm so lightheaded. I uh, today, no today, well, today I'm a little lightheaded because I had my third shot. But uh, <laughs> the, um, the 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 problem with me uh, was, I think, it had to do a bit with Flomax and the fact that it makes you it lowers mm -hmm. your blood pressure. You know? Goes down. Yeah. So. Uh, but uh, I have I got great news today. Uh, uh, haven't felt dizzy or lightheaded or anything. And um, uh, but they weighed me today and I've lost 35 pounds since January, hmm. which means that I now weigh 10 pounds more than I weighed in 1967. Wow, that's great. That's yeah, great. And I feel good too. Well, mm -hmm. I lost you know sixty pounds, and I've gained back about thirty of it. You know, but that a lot of that has to do from the operation that I had. You know, mm -hmm. things like that. So, anyway, so uh, we're getting towards the end of our time here. So you're doing this is like uh, this is like Alex Bennett's uh, waiting room. You know, mm -hmm. you, the doctor <laughs> will see you now. You know. But uh, of course, we have Trucker Steve, and Trucker Steve is uh, waiting for, okay, he's taking dialysis and waiting for kidneys. Uh, it's kind of like waiting for Godot, I guess. Uh, and um, <laughs> Charlie has diabetes, missing several toes. Uh, and uh, anybody else? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have Jeff. He's got uh, like a bunch of artificial hearts in his body or something like that. Okay. And of course, Jack has his problems. Oh, Vernon, you had prostate cancer. Yes, but I'm recovered. Right? Is it? it, <laughs> it, it, it so have I, pretty much. You know, I mean. Uh, and I yeah, they caught they caught it early. They caught it early, and um, <clears throat> the last yeah. four or five PSA tests that I've had, it was less than one. You know, my, wow. Mine, my my wow. last two, have been zero. Well, because you don't have a prostate. No, Alex. I have a prostate. You still <laughs> do? Absolutely. 
Okay. But, uh, all they did was put seeds in it, and they're, they're growing they now. And trees are cut, they yanked a tree me. is blooming out of my ass. You know. <laughs> uh, how about you, Wesley? You got any medical problems? Yeah, I've been spending three hundred and twenty dollars a month on this uh, blood pressure medicine and uh, metformin for my diabetes, and I'm also on a cholesterol. Thing. Those three, those are my three pills. But fortunately, with the insurance, I'm getting a three hundred and twenty dollar bottle of, I think it's Lavatin or Levotin or something like that. Yeah, uh, for about a dollar. Oh, so, oh, okay. Well, then yeah. that, that's cool. Man, those pharmacy colleges are those pharmacy guys are gouging. There's well, just no way that well, they're they're not you know, they're not. Although the, the pills of something cost three hundred and twenty dollars to make. You know what to try. Uh, I've been doing it. I'm buying all my drugs without insurance from Costco, Mail, and Pharmacy. Huh. Uh, because if their prices are cheaper than I can get down the street at Walgreens with insurance. Yeah. That's where yeah. I go, Walgreens, with Medicare. So, yeah, yeah. For Medicaid. So, you know, I, I always suggest that people go to Costco. It, it really is... Uh, it, it really sa has saved me a lot of money. Where it saves me money is is that I pay the insurance every month, okay, so that's one cost. And then another part of that cost is the $450 deductible at the beginning of the year, which is added to everything that I buy, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, if I do away with, if I take that all into consideration, it's much cheaper to buy without without uh, uh, medical coverage, at, you know, drug coverage at uh, at uh, uh, Costco. It's just, uh, it saved me a lot of money. Give you an example quickly. One pill I take, which is a generic for Cialis that I took. My insurance won't even cover, okay? And if I want to buy it, it's going to cost me $425 uh, uh, for uh, three months, I think. Do you know what it is at Costco? 25 bucks for three months. Huh. I was going to say twenty, but that's close. Yeah, twenty-five bucks. Now I pay zero for it. What What's happening at these at, at Walgreens? I pay Thirty-two for my Viagra. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have? I, I'm getting the generic. The generic Viagra. Is it what is it called? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, hold generic on. Viagra. <laughs> yeah, generic. Hold on. Hold on. It, it, it gives you a generic boner. Yeah. That's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> Atravastatin and Losartan. Wow. What I'm on. Oh, I take Losartan. Xenophil. High blood pressure. Yeah. Really? I take. Uh, I. Uh, I take. I take, I take the generic uh, uh, Cialis called Tadadafil. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. I, yeah. I take that too, and it's free because I worked for the state for thirty years. Oh, good. For me, it's only twenty-five bucks for three months. Wow. Uh, and Alex, I, I know that you worry that when we start talking about these kinds of things that we have uh, no young listeners, but I look at it this way. We're just telling young men what you got to look forward to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this I is wish someone had told me. We, are, when I was a young man. we yeah. are men of a certain age. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, Jack's well, got a great J TV show, J by the Jack's, way. Jack's, yeah. Jack's, that was our life story, okay. I think. Jack's <laughs> got to go, so I got to say goodbye to him first. Okay. Now, listen, all of you guys that want to keep talking about your Viagra, your Cialis, your Lucretia, <laughs> you know, whatever you got. I had a maid once. I, I, and, and I, I, we, I had a cleaning woman once named Levitra. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think George Kingfish Stevens <laughs> had a oh, woman I mean. named uh, 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 Sapphire. And. and yeah. Yeah. I was looking for a joke there. There's no joke. There's no joke. There's no joke. Yeah. See you in about 60 okay, seconds. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, and you have to use Skype to get to him. Okay. Uh, hey, I want to thank, uh, first of all, our, our good friend, uh, uh, William Ferguson, for being here tonight. Charlie. Thank you, Alex. Bravo, Charlie. I'm so see happy. You maybe, maybe, yeah, that you're back. Trucker Steve, always good to see you. Always thinking about you. Always hoping, you know, that you're going to be just fine, and I'm sure you will. Vernon Nunn, terrific. Hey, Wesley, call again, will you? I hope to. This has been the, uh, just a wonderful meeting. Yeah, I hope you didn't think it was the most wonderful thing that's happened to you lately, because if so, you're in bad shape. 
And finally, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you so much, what? Jeff. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Hopefully some of them will go over and join uh, Jack Bishop, who is next with the, uh, uh, with the uh, what do you call it, the intersection. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. I will be back here again uh, tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, get the vaccine or wear a mask.